Welcome to SharePoint Patterns and Practices webcast. And this time we have a look on how to uh, create your Visual Studio Team Solution build and release pipelines for SharePoint Framework Solution. So essentially, how can you do automatic deployments from Visual Studio Online to SharePoint Online and, and what are the steps to configure those things? So CULP tasks and configurations within the solutions. My name is Sasa Yuvonen. I'm a Senior Program Manager from SharePoint Engineering. And today's main uh, presenter will be Elio. Uh, Elio, will you do the quick intros as well? Hello, I'm Elio Seraf. I'm a trainer at uh, UTU and I'm also an MVP. So I will be talking and guiding you through the build and release pipeline process for SharePoint Framework Solutions. Excellent. So like mentioned, Elio is going to take over the presentation uh, and I'll be just jumping in and asking questions every now and then if there's anything to ask. So Elio, please take it away. Perfect. So first of all, you can do some automation for Gulp uh, with building your own custom Gulp tasks in a SharePoint framework solution project. So what can you do? Uh, for instance, if you're building your own uh, solutions for SharePoint framework, the moment they are ready to go to production or to development or to test, you want to do some automation that you don't have to manually upload all these, all these files yourself. So you can use custom Gulp task, for example, to update the CDN location in the manifest file or to upload the assets SharePoint framework created for you, the JavaScript files, to an Office 365 CDN. Or you can also rely on the already there Gulp, talks to, Gulp task to publish to Azure CDN. And one last thing is you can also use a Gulp task to upload the application package that has been created to your site at Catalog. So if you create such kind of things, it will automate or make your life a lot easier and you don't have to really do any manual steps anymore. So for these three tasks, I created a this custom build task and I will slightly demo them. So let's first go to our application. We are not going to go into depth in the application itself. We're just going to change some colors just so you see that there will be differences. Let me close this one. So first of all, the application itself or the web art looks like this, very nicely designed web art. Uh, pink awesome and yellow design. is, yes. yeah, <laughs> pink and yellow matches great. So what we are going to do is we just go to the Office UI Fabric website and we pick another color like magenta dark, if you like it. And we are going to change this over here. So this will set the background color of our web art to magenta dark. We can do a test run. So we can say gulp serve. It's going to start up my local server so that we can see if the web part is exactly how it should be rendered. So build web part. And now you see that it's yellow and with a darker magenta color as a background. So if this web part is good to go to production, you can make use of three custom Gulp tasks. These three custom Gulp tasks can be found over here. This is, for instance, the update manifest file. What it's going to do is you can just say Gulp update manifest and specify a CDN path. So this CDN path is going to overwrite the one which is already available in the right manifest file. So if you want to automate this project or if you have multiple environments, you can do this via command line. So you can say, let's kill this. Go update money test CDN path. Specify your tenant. And 
and they are located in a CDN pod or a CDN library. Once I click enter, it will update my manifest file. If I would go and check my manifest file, this URL should now be entered. So you see, this is the same as what I just entered over here. So before we go to production, you have to run some tasks, like for instance, the first task you have to run is go ship or go bundle ship, which does the same thing. Once ready, we are going to package our solution. So we are running gulp package solution. And so ship. Quick, quick note on the uh, on the bundle ship is ship. Uh, when you're writing that, that means that the manifest XML is then pointing to that URL, which is in the right manifest JSON. Um, and then obviously this package solution will then create the SPP K2 package, just to clarify on that. Yeah, true. <laughs> Thank you for that. So now the package is created. What you typically do is you will gather the files uh, that were created, like for instance, um, the package file, and you would upload it to the app catalog site. Now, if you want to automate it, again, you can make use of some custom tasks. So for this, I have created two tasks and um, you should use whatever you want. Um, like for instance, if you want to upload all the tasks or all the assets to an Azure CDN, you don't have to rely on the upload to SharePoint functionality, of course. You can just use the one that is already available. If you want to make use of a SharePoint library for storing your files, or if you want to use an Office 365 CDN, you can rely on the upload to SharePoint functionality. So what you can see in this task is you can set some configuration arguments, like for instance, the username, the password, the tenant, the site, and the library. Uh, you can configure it from within the file itself, or you can specify them as arguments when you are going to configure or execute these functions or the ta these tasks. When you run it, it's going to use an SP Sync, which is the Gulp SP Sync CREDS module. Uh, it's a Go plugin, and it's going to upload all these files, which from the location it found. So it's going to use this folder location. It's going to upload these files towards SharePoint. So it's going to automate that process. So let me demo this. As I did not configure anything yet, I can specify everything via arguments. So I can specify the tenant, CDN. I also have a username and password, but for this demo, I just hide it from you um, so that you don't see my username and password for my environment. So right now it's going to upload my files. And if everything succeeds, you should see that it's uploading three files and that it's going to publish three files. Or in this case, it's even going to upload four files. Probably I had an older version of the web part created. So now these files are uploaded. So my, my assets are now on SharePoint. My web part itself isn't aware of it because my app package still has to be uploaded to SharePoint. So for that, I can also use a task. The task looks almost the same. The only thing that has changed is that it's going to upload everything to the app catalog site. So for this, you require three, uh, four arguments, the username, the password, the tenant, and the catalog site. So once you configure these things, you can do go upload app package the catalog site is in my case it's site catalog and once this is uploaded Upload the 
successful. Now publish, OK. So now everything is done. And we go to Safari to check all that part. If we would reload, hopefully the background of our web part changed. So now we did some optim uh, automation with just some gulp custom commands or custom tasks. To go the solution is from here. Oh, sorry, sorry. sorry. Uh, before we go forward from here, so let's just recap what we did. So essentially, there's two uh, or or there's a couple tasks. Uh, the first, there's two things which needed to happen: get the updated uh, assets, uh, the, the right CDN location, uh, so updated JavaScript files and all of those, and then uh, updating the packets in the app catalog, uh, which is then pointing to the updated uh, assets. Right. So. That's essentially what we did with those two tasks, uh, which can be done manually as well, but you can do uh, automation using these things. Yeah, indeed. Now, the essential plan uh, for these tasks were to create uh, or to fully automate it so that you can make use of a build and release pipeline. So can it be automated further? Yes, of course. Uh, and for that, we are going to use uh, VSTS or Visual Studio Team Services. As we all have multiple environments, probably for dev development, testing, and production, we can do some automation over there. So every time we push out a new release to our dev branch, you can start up a new build process for your dev branch, and then you can do a release to your developer tenants. Same can be done for testing, and same can be done for production. So the only thing as a developer, what do you have to do is committing your code to VSTS. So what are you going to do in VSTS? You're going to create two pipelines or two definitions. Uh, so you build a build pipeline definition per branch, so development, test, and production. And you would do the same thing for your release definition. So if your environments are the same, you can configure it for these the same environments. But probably it's even better to have multiple environments so that you don't accidentally overwrite any files on production that were coming from development or that were specified for development. So first of all, we are going to dive into the build pipeline. So how does a build pipeline look like or what does it look like? First, the first step is when we are going to commit um, the build pipeline is going to start and the first action it will do is it will gather all the files and it will do an npm install. Once it retrieved all the dependencies, it's going to update the manifest file. So it's going to set the right CDN, which you configure for that branch. Then you do a bundle of your project, a package of the solution. So these three steps we just did as a demo in the code. And then we are going to copy and publish the build artifacts. Once that's done, a release pipeline can start and you can do a new release. You can specify how you want to do these releases. You can do nightly releases or you can do it whenever a build pipeline succeeds. So let's do a demo with that. So we go back to the web part. Let's do some changes. So let's do a quick change to the color again. So we can say this can be closed. We can go back to over here. We can say blue to dark. We're going to set the background color to blue dark. And just to show you that it also works with other files, of course, I can pick another color and I can set this in the SAS file so I can change the color of the button. So the button will be now a bit lighter. Let's do a quick test to see if it works. We 
think after this change it will perk. So probably it wasn't that. Uh, <laughs> and it works. So Yay. this is a much better design compared to what we had before. Absolutely. We can close this. We can say, OK, stop. What I'm going to do right now is going to tell Visual Studio Code, OK, I'm ready. You can commit these changes. Um, so we can say color changes. We commit. I always do the push like this. You can also do the push via Visual Studio Code, but I like this want to see what's actually happening instead of opening the Git console. So right now, I pushed out my new files. So let's go to VSTS. So here I'm on VSTS. If I would refresh my dashboard, you should see all the previous builds. So they were all green so they all succeeded you see that there is a current build in progress so if you would open this it's now in hold so it's in a queue and it's in a queue until it found an agent so it can take some time okay the agent is found and now the application starts so the first job that will start is the npm install then you will see that it's going to update the manifest file from the cdn url you specified then you're going to bundle the project package the solution and copy over all these files so that the release pipeline can start and this one running the npm install does take a while uh, in the visual studio online as well like it does for on-premises so We'll speed up this section uh, so we can see the progress uh, when it moves into the uploading of the manifest to the CDN. And now we're moving to the CDN section. Uh, so, and these following steps are relatively fast because it's just compiling the stuff uh, or bundling the stuff and then deployment. The npm install always takes a while because we're pulling down the dependencies for the package. Yeah, and the copy of the publish artifacts can also take some time because it's going to upload it. Yeah, it depends on a, a amount of host that those assets. Absolutely, good point, good point. But uh, in general, uh, while it's doing this, uh, so we will uh, share the locations of the scripts. We'll share the, the guidelines of the scripts in the video notes as well. So you're able to actually follow up on, on what's happening. Uh, and after this one has been completed, um, well, Basically, how you create this build is quite simply creating new builds uh, in the build and releases tab in the Visual Studio Online. Any any other things to consider uh, on this one, Elio? Um, you can also include some testing. So if you have your own unit tests for SharePoint Framework, that's also something you can include over here. So if your unit test will fail, it can send out the report, hey, this failed, or if it's it worked out or everything was okay, then it could start up that release pipeline. Yeah. Um, that's one good thing about it also. If I would go to my build, um, so I can show you the definition. It's not that hard. As you already explained here, we are going to show the links. So we will give you all the information you can and create it yourself. So over here you just see the actual tasks that we're running. So you see the npm install, the updated, the bundler, and so on. And you see just the same things I was just doing in Visual Studio Code. So I did gulp, update manifest, and this is my CDN part. So I just use the same CDN part in this case. Yeah. And it might have been that you were wondering, why do you need to have that task? Well, actually, this is why you need to have that task, uh, because it, even though it's a really simplistic operation. So. so by default, you will get an email. You can configure it. So if you don't want any emails, uh, then you can turn it off. But it would also be nice to have an email so that you know that the build process succeeded. So this is 
an email that VSDS generates for me so that I know that my build was completed and that a release pipeline will start to release everything to SharePoint. So the release pipeline is already running right now. So we can just see if it succeeded or not. So hopefully it did. So, but what does it look like? It's very simple. Uh, on, the only thing it has to do is retrieve all these files that were just uploaded. Uh, then you're going to do the uploading of your files to the CDN. So you're going to upload the assets. Depending on what you're going to use, uh, you're going to configure it uh, for Azure CDN or SharePoint. And the last step is to upload your application package. Now, one thing to note that I didn't explain you yet is the application package, the very first time you're going to upload, you have to do a manual upload because you have to uh, acknowledge or trust that application package. From the moment it's trusted, you can use the Gulp task to do the automated uploads. So and the very thing, first time, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just feel free to continue with that line. Sorry for jumping on. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to tell that uh, the manual step is good for an administrator so that they are in control of uh, allowing that to your environment or not. Absolutely, absolutely. And the trust operation is a one-time operation for specific app True. or SPFX file or solution. Now, um, what's interesting to, here to note, maybe it's slightly off the topic of the session, but maybe we should pinpoint it here as well. So. Um, Theoretically, when, when you're creating a new version of the SPFX solution package, let's say version 1.1, like in this case, we created a new version. Theoretically, you can update that uh, package or the, the solution just by uploading the files to the CDN. The reason why I'm saying theoretically is that our default Webpack bundling process will actually generate uh, generate uh, a another unique GUID for the a new version. And that's why we need to do this in two steps, the two steps being uploading the updated files to the CDN, and the second step is uploading the application packets to the app catalog. Now, in the engineering, we're looking into uh, having those kind of options in the future where you do not need to, or you're able to lock down on the uh, JavaScript file names and manifest file names uh, when the solution, new version of the solution is coming. So there is a slight confusion on this one, uh, apparently in our documentation and in the community as well. Yeah, and that's what you also saw during my demo that I was uploading three files. Yes. I should have run a gulp clean uh, before I was starting over again. So let's go back to our uh, VSDS dashboards. And on VSDS, we should see. Uh, yes, I want to leave. I didn't do any change. We should see that there was a new release, so release 21. You can normally also open it. And you can see that it succeeded. Um, in case you do something wrong, like for instance, I did it on release 19 just for this demo, you can also open it. Um, why? Okay, so it was st oh, still loading. And you can also see where it is going wrong. So I just misconfigured something in my Gulp file, and you can see where it goes wrong. So in case everything works out, you, uh, it will extract the files, it will upload them to SharePoint, and it will upload the application packets to SharePoint. So we know that release 21 uh, succeeded. So if we would refresh, we get our new web parts with a new background. So we see black, a darker black, a uh, darker blue background and a lighter button color, so we know that our release and build pipelines have succeeded. And of course, you can, use, you can use everything for different environments, so you probably first do this to test and then to production. Again, you can retrieve notifications also for uh, the release pipelines, so this is just an example of my release pipeline that just tells me, okay, release 18 uh, is now in production. It was succeeded, so you can check it out. That were my demos and my slides. So <laughs> excellent. So uh, let's let's quickly talk about <clears throat> just to summarize the webcast. So essentially, this is. 
the classic story in the let's say system integration uh, creators or in the ISV solution uh, ISV scenarios uh, you want to test your daily builds you want to test or you want to test every single time you check in stuff that is still working this way uh, you can automate the whole thing based on hey I'm checking in my stuff to the Visual Studio online poof it is getting within I think it was four minutes for the build uh, Path right now and then additional minutes for the release pipeline but like in 10 minutes you will have an updated uh, situation in the UI within the SharePoint online and technically you could then automate uh, let's say web UI testing based on assumptions in there so it's kind of an interesting scenarios for automating the initial high-level testing in this one as well but anyway this is kind of the step number one in the ALM scenarios how to get the deployment to work properly and all of that and it's relatively easy thing to do especially with those uh, Gallup tasks uh, which are available in a github uh, and the packages which are available so people can easily set up these kind of things within their development any any other words from your side Ilya? Um, I think we covered everything um, in this talk so just one thing we didn't show was the testing of our web part. So yes, you can include it. It was not included, but in case you want it, uh, feel free to add it uh, as a task. Yes. So that's the only thing to, to tell yeah. you. And maybe on that one as well, depending on when you're watching the video, we are looking into having a, uh, let's say, additional guidance on testing, end-to-end -end testing. We need to do some changes in the SharePoint framework as well uh, from a SharePoint engineering perspective. So there are certain scenarios which are not quite there yet, but it's all coming uh, gradually um, as we move along. But thank you, Ilya, for great presentation and walkthrough on what does it actually mean, how easily, easy it can be, how easily it can be configured. Uh, to the Visual Studio Online and uh, also thank you for these awesome gulp tasks uh, because this will be widely used by uh, other uh, other developers, no doubt. So excellent to have all of this ready for the people adapting the SharePoint framework. But I think that's, that's it. Thank you, Ulio. Thank you, everybody, for watching. I will come up with a new webcast sooner or later. Cheers. Bye-bye.